The day has finally come. You've decided to make the move up to 4K video and purchased a new TV along with a brand new surround sound receiver that also supports 4K. You've connected everything up and are probably really proud you've got both picture and sound working. So the big question is, do you sit back and enjoy what you've done? Or do you spend a little bit more time reading the manual to really dial in your new setup? As a company with thousands of installations under our belt, we go behind lots of systems done by other companies. It may surprise you to know there are an awful lot of home theater receivers out there installed by alleged professionals that had no more done than the wiring connected just like you may have done when you got everything working. The audio video world is one of the few areas where you can only halfway finish things and you'll still have picture and sound. Why is calibration so important and why are almost all of our installation clients amazed when they hear the before and after? It really comes down to enabling your system to perform up to its best potential. And heck, it only takes some extra time. You are essentially making adjustments that allow your system to deliver the sound to your ears that is as close as possible to what the engineer who mixed the soundtrack envisioned. Let's go over some of the steps and why they matter. This is one of the most critical steps. When your receiver is brand new out of the box before calibration, every single speaker is going to get the exact same level of volume from your amplifier section. You might think, well, that seems like the right thing to do, but it's actually not for a couple of reasons. First, you want the sound from each of your home theater speakers to be at roughly the same volume. It's okay to turn up your center channel a little or boost your subwoofer a little bit for personal taste, but in general, your speakers should be close to each other in volume level. All speakers are not made equal, and some speakers will play far louder than others with the same amount of power. Also, even the position of the speakers in your room can affect how loud a speaker sounds to your ears, as the room may reinforce or take away from the perceived output level. Fortunately, all home theater receivers have what is called a speaker level control. This gives you a huge range of volume adjustment so you can get all of your speakers fully balanced out. All you have to do is turn on the receiver's test tones, measure the levels, and make adjustments up or down on each speaker until they are all the same. You'll likely need a way to make the adjustments, but there are many free smartphone sound pressure level apps made just for this purpose. The sound engineers who created those amazing effects in today's movies spend a great deal of time producing soundtracks that fill the room with immersive sound. To get this magic to occur, the sound has to get to our ears at the same time from all of the speakers. Obviously, in a typical room, almost every speaker is a different distance from our ears. The good news is every home theater receiver also has a way to correct for this. You simply measure the distance each speaker is from your main seat, put in these values, and the receiver makes the corrections to allow the sound to arrive to your ears at the same time. Almost every home theater setup will have a subwoofer that is designed to handle the low bass tones and deep bass special effects. Not every speaker in a home theater can handle the deep bass. If the speaker is small, it's better to route the bass to the subwoofer. This takes the load off a small speaker, helping it to perform better, and frankly, a subwoofer or subwoofers will normally do a much better job on reproducing the deep bass effects. To route the bass to your subwoofers, you have to tell the system to do it, as they usually default to just full range speakers. Just like the levels, this is relatively easy. Most speakers, unless they are very large, should be set to an 80 hertz crossover frequency. Or in some cases, you just have a choice of large or small. Small will equal 80 hertz. Doing this will send the deep bass sounds from those speakers to your subwoofer. Many modern surround sound receivers have added a new feature that can actually correct for problems created by your room. Every room impacts the sound in a pretty dramatic way, reducing some frequencies and boosting others. Room correction or room equalization systems have gotten very good at eliminating a lot of these problems. Doing this step can make a huge difference in some rooms, but it can be a little daunting. We've created another blog linked below to help you understand Room EQ better. It's definitely worth checking out. This one is the final icing on the cake. You'll hear the biggest improvements with your main left and right and center speakers and your subwoofer. 
Ideally, you want your left and right speakers to be the exact same distance off the wall behind them, and if they are angled, at the same angle. A tape measure and a little listening will help you there. For tuning your center channel, we actually have an entire how-to guide also linked below, which is worth a read if you want to get the very best sound from your center channel. Playing around with your subwoofer placement can also have a big change in the way your bass sounds if you have the physical room to move it around. So now that you know why, you're probably ready to jump in and do your first calibration. Calibrating a home theater receiver used to be a daunting task, a menu after submenu that felt as if it required a PhD in owner's manual speak to get a good outcome. Today's home theater receivers have made this process much easier, and in some cases, it's totally automatic. Many will step you through the process with an easy to understand on-screen display. We do have one bit of advice. If your system automatically adjusts everything, we think it's a good idea to go back into the menus and confirm everything looks okay. We've seen distances and crossover points be way off. Most automatic systems seem to do a decent job with levels. It's just an easy matter to just recheck your distances with a tape measure and confirm your crossover settings are close to 80 hertz after the auto calibration runs. We hope this short guide has helped you understand why it's important to calibrate your home theater receiver. And if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or talk to one of our professionals through live chat or our website. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to our channel. On our channel, we review amazing new technology from all around the world. Thanks for watching.